Hello and welcome back once again to Dental Basics with me, Dr. Parvati Raghavan. Today's topic is about the nervous system. My last two topics were about the cranial nerves. So I thought it would be a good idea to know a little bit about the nervous system too. The nervous system is divided into two, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. As you can see coming in the sketch is the red area and the green lines. The red is the brain and the spinal cord forming the central nervous system. This is made up of motor nerves and sensory nerves. The motor nerves are connected to muscle while the sensory conducts sensation of sight, smell, touch, taste, etc. The peripheral nervous system consists of nerves branching out of spinal cord to all parts of the body. This is grouped into somatic, enteric and autonomic, which is further divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. Somatic is relating to soma, that is body, not mind. Enteric relates to intestines and autonomic functions spontaneously or automatically. The nervous system is made up of neurons and glial cells. Let us first learn about the neuron. On your right, I'm sketching a single nerve cell with organelles inside the cell body. A single neuron is made of cell body and processes. Cell body or soma is similar to other body cells like it has mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, and nucleus with one nucleolus. It is different because the nucleolus does not contain centrosome, so cell division is not possible in nerve cell. This means we are born with all the neurons we are ever going to have. Does this mean new nerve cells will not be formed even though they will continue to die like other body cells? Thankfully, research shows that adult human brain is capable of neurogenesis, that is generating new neurons for learning. There are neural stem cells present in certain areas of the brain. When required, they migrate to areas where new neurons are needed and differentiate into them. Research is still going on in this field. Structures found specifically in the nerve cell body are nissle bodies and neurofibrils. Nissle bodies are found only in the cell body and are large granules of rough endoplasmic reticulum which synthesize proteins. Neurofibrils are fibers or thread-like structures found in the soma and the processes. They are made up of proteins. Their function is to provide structural support and transport proteins and other substances across the cytoplasm. Next, let us learn about the processes the neuron is made up of. There are two processes a neuron is made up of. Dendrites and axon. Dendrites can be absent, one or many, whereas all neurons always have only one axon. The dendrites collect impulses, the soma adds them together, and the axon transmits it to the next cell. You can see all in the image. Each axon terminal forms connections with dendrites, axons and cell bodies of as many as 1000 other neurons across tiny gaps called synapses. Impulses always travel in one direction from dendrite to axon terminals. Here they trigger release of chemical substances called neurotransmitters which pass through the synapse causing the connecting nerve to catch the impulse. This is an enlarged view of the axon terminal. These are the neurotransmitter substances and this arrow is the impulse reaching here. Coming up next is a structure called myelin sheath. This as we know now is a single nerve. The axon is encapsulated or covered all around by the myelin sheath, but it is not continuous along the length 
and its gaps in between called the nodes of Ranvier. Myelin sheath is whitish in color. It makes white matter of the brain and spinal cord look white. An axon can be myelinated or non-myelinated. Impulses jump over the myelin sheath to the nodes of Ranvier and travel much faster. So nerves which are myelinated like motor neurons conduct impulses at a faster rate and this helps us move quickly. However, the axons that lack myelination like our olfactory nerves are much slower. An interesting thing to note is that term nerve means only the axon part of the nerve cell. It doesn't include the soma. Now we'll do a quick recap of what we learned so far. We learned that the neuron is made up of cell body and processes. Also, there are special structures that are found in the nerve cell body. About the processes, we learned that there is always only one axon per neuron and that impulses travel in one direction that is from the dendrite to the axon terminals. And finally, we learned about the myelin sheath. The nervous system is made up of neurons and glial cells. Glial cells or neuroglia means nerve glue. They help in the formation of myelin sheath, remove pathogens and dead neurons, support by surrounding the neuron and holding them in place, insulate one neuron from another, provide nutrition by not only supplying nutrients and oxygen, but also maintaining composition of fluids surrounding the neurons. But they are not like neurons, for they do not conduct impulses. Mnemonics for remembering the functions of the glial cells are help remove sin. Glial cells are found in the central and peripheral nervous system. In the CNS, there are four types. Microglia, ependymal cells, astrocytes, and oligodendrocytes. In the peripheral nervous system, they are called squan cells and satellite cells. Micro means small, ependymal are lining cells, astrocytes are star-shaped, oligo means few and dendro means tree or branches. These cells have fewer branches. Squan is the name of a scientist and the word satellite means follower and these cells just do that. Mnemonics to remember glial cells of the central nervous system is MEAO Microglia, Ependymal, Astrocyte, Oligodendrocyte and SS, Squan and Satellite. Next, let us see how these cells look. These are the glial cells in the central nervous system. Down to your right is Microglia the M of MEO. It is a lot of branching dendrites. These cells are modified immune cells. They are derived from the embryonic mesodermal cells which also give rise to the cells of our immune system. Next on top is E, the ependymal cells. They line the cerebrospinal fluid filled ventricles in our brain and the central canal of spinal cord. They are ciliated and columnar in shape. The astrocytes are the most numerous type of cells in the central nervous system. They form synaptic support, control blood-brain barrier, etc. On the left side of the image are the oligodendrocytes with fewer dendrites than the other cells. They, along with squan cells, form myelin sheath. This is the image of the glial cells of the peripheral nervous system. The squan cells forming the myelin sheath and the satellite cells all around the nerve cell body supporting it. Neurons can be classified structurally and functionally. Structurally, there are a number of different types of neurons in our nervous system, but we are going to limit our study to just three different types. One multipolar. They have many processes arising from a cell body. 2. Bipolar. They have two processes arising from a cell body. 3. Pseudo-unipolar 
has one process but it splits into two processes. So it is pseudo or false unipolar. The next three slides are the images of each of these different neurons. Multipolar neurons have many processes arising from cell body. There are many dendrites and always one axon. These are the most common type of neurons in the central nervous system. Example, motor neurons like those supplying muscles of mastication, skeletal muscles, etc. So one axon and many dendrites here. Bipolar neurons have two processes arising from the cell body. One side has dendrite and the other side of the cell has one axon. They are specialized sensory, example olfactory neurons. The dendrites are towards the nasal side and the axon terminals in the olfactory bulb. Olfactory nerves transmit smell through the nose to the central nervous system. They are non-myelinated, so the impulse transmission of smell is slower than in multipolar neurons. This is an image of how a single olfactory neuron is oriented. So here we have one axon and only one dendrite. Next is the pseudo unipolar neuron. One process arising from the cell body splits in two directions. On the right side, these are the axon terminals. On the left are the dendrites. In the middle is the cell body which has one very short process, splitting into two. This is the axon. Remember that an axon of a nerve cell is just a long process that conducts impulse away from the cell body. And dendrites are the smaller branches that receive impulses from other cells. The pseudo-unipolar neurons are sensory neurons for touch and pain. Example, they are seen in the trigeminal ganglion. This finishes the structural classification of neurons. Now functionally, neurons are classified as efferent neurons through which information arrives to the central nervous system. So efferent arrives. Two are the efferent neurons through these instructions exit the central nervous system to various body organs. So efferent is for exit. Three are the interneurons. They interconnect other neurons creating neural circuits. They are located only in the central nervous system and make up 99% of all the neurons. They coordinate information between the efferent and efferent neurons, thus helping our body respond to the surroundings. They are responsible for learning, creativity, decision making and emotions. Now let us do a recap. We classified neurons structurally and functionally. Structurally as multipolar, bipolar and pseudo unipolar. Functionally as efferent, efferent and interneurons. Going back to the classification of the nervous system, we divided it into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. For a bit more detail of this division, we move on to the next slide. This is the nervous system divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system has nerves coming out of the brain called cranial nerves and those coming out of the spinal cord called the spinal nerves. There are a group of nerves that carry information away from the central nervous system and those that carry information towards the central nervous system. The motor nerves send signal from the brain to the body and the sensory nerves carry sensation from the body to the brain. Sensory nerves carry sensory information like smell, light, temperature, etc. to the CNS, which triggers the motor neurons to make muscle move in response to the sensory stimuli. For example, sensory smell of pizza to the brain causes motor neurons to activate muscles to pick it up and eat it. Thus, the sensory and motor neurons work in coordination with each other. Peripheral nervous system has three divisions. Somatic, Entric. Somatic controls voluntary movements. Entric controls the gastroenteric system. The third 
Autonomic nervous system works spontaneously in two forms, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic for fight or flight and parasympathetic for rest and digest. It is activated when relaxed, but sympathetic nervous system is activated only during emergencies. Para means alongside. Parasympathetic nerves run alongside the sympathetic nerves and tend to oppose and balance the effect of the sympathetic system. Sympathetic nervous system serves to accelerate the heart rate, constrict the blood vessels and raise the blood pressure. Parasympathetic nervous system serves to slow the heart rate, increase the intestinal and glandular activity and relax the sphincter muscles. That will be all about the nervous system. Thank you for liking, subscribing and sharing.